Uh, Mr. Mark Pogan will be linked to the slides and it will also appears at the end if I get that far. Uh, so why do I think I should be here talking? So I'm one of these diverse people who's not a tech writer. I've worked in developer relations. Uh, I've been doing an IT a very, very long time. Um, I come from the wrong land, which is uh, down the road on the peninsula. Uh, and it's a little different way to connect with me if you want to. Um, so for those who are not familiar with Docs as code, a quick refresh so it's about using developer tools, developer workflows um, uh, to make writing documentation more responsive and easier. Um, there's some websites there and some search terms you can use. Uh, the important thing here is that we're using developer style tools, so particularly CICD, which is running jobs on the cloud every time we make a change. Um, magically, and using Git. Um, and we want to use all these tools to automate things so that things as much time as possible without us having to do a bit more about it. So, talking about automation a bit more, this uh, is a screenshot from some cloud automation going on. So, here I'm taking my example documentation and I'm doing it through some verification or some validation, make your pardon. So, we can do all sorts of different ones. It's very simple here. I'm just checking for spelling, I'm checking for links, uh, and I'm checking for style with some simple styles. Well. Okay. Now the problem with this is it happens in the cloud. And we want to give developers or writers, I should say, immediate feedback if we think it's a problem before they start taking their change off the workstation and putting them in the cloud. That way they want it to fix them in a timely manner by like immediately. So there's a couple of different uh, obvious ways to do that. One is to write with some convenient scripts so they can run checks on their workstation uh, manually. Um, but it's run manually, so they might, they might actually not do it. We've got no guarantees. They might have some input plugins that do a lot of this work for them, either, again, manually or automatically. But if they're, if they're depending on all our developers, all our writers, content creators, um, using the same tooling. Um, and it's been my experience that often a lot of these editor the plugins don't work the same way as the tools that we use on the cloud. So you get different results. So what I'm going to propose is that Git Hooks is a way to get around this. Git Hooks is a feature that automatically kicks off scripts on the workstation when a Git event happens. So Git is a control tool. We're using that to record our changes. So when we record a change, then Git will do something for us. Um, the problem with Git hook scripts is that they're located in a special bit in the folder that is local to our workstation. Uh, and if somebody makes a change and improves it and enhances it, we have to get the benefit of that. If we make a change, that change is not, is not set, sent to the rest of the team. So they're actually really hard to do up to date, and therefore a lot of teams don't use them properly, or at all even. So there are a couple of solutions. Um, I'm going to propose that you use Hooks Path. It's simple, it's easy, um, and it's quite flexible. And all you have to do is create a directory in your Git repository into which you install your hooks. You make a single configuration change called core.hookspath to point to this new directory. And then every time that somebody does something, it will look for the um, hook scripts in this new directory, not the, the hidden thing that we talked about earlier. Okay? <coughs> it is your your own. So there is some work to do to get this set up and do it working to maintain your scripts, but the benefit is that every time you do something with Git, uh, you push changes to this up into the central repository and then your colleagues uh, bring those changes down, they will get the changes to the hook scripts as well. If you have a large project, also look at pre-commit, but it works differently, it requires more setup. Now I've got one minute, okay. <laughs> um, things to be aware of are that hook scripts can be skipped if you specify no verify option on your git command, but that's okay. So you shouldn't disable that feature, I mean you could We'll wrap the git command and disable that feature, but you shouldn't because there are, there are valid reasons why people want to use no verify. But that means that you all, but users always have the option to skip the git hooks. So you're not guaranteed it's going to be used. Git hooks will happen in real time. <laughs> 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 